Right. Welcome to the Nerd Social. I'm Nathan. So we are going to talk about Star Trek Discovery Season 4, Episode 4, which is entitled All is Possible. Much later than we were expecting. Had some technical difficulties last night. Uh, yeah. Uh, so it was written by Alan McElroy and Eric J. Robbins and directed by John Ottoman. So the spoiler-free summary given to us by... Paramount Plus is Tilly and Adira lead a team of Starfleet Academy cadets on a training mission that takes a dangerous turn. Meanwhile, Burnham is pulled into tense negotiations on Navarre. So, Conjure, what did you think of this episode? Spoiler free. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I liked it as as well. I I might I mainly liked it because it was a fewer time a uh, fewer um, plot plots. Like I, I it still had probably one too many plots f for me. So like the the two plot lines that they that was uh described in the explanation um are joined by another plot line that has to do with a book without spoiling too much. Uh, so there's, there's three plot lines in this 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 episode, whereas the previous episode had like four or five. So it's <laughs> it's just less to, less to, to uh, pay attention to. Uh, uh, I, 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 I definitely tend to like the episodes that are more focused. Like A, a B plot, uh, if it's an A plot altogether, I really like, uh, I, I, I appreciate those episodes. But uh, again, because we had it, we, we have this story um, the series in long arc, we have to deal with certain things. So, episodes like episode two are going to be rare. Episode two was the, the only episode that we've had so far where we only focused on one thing. So, yeah, I, I liked it. I liked I, I liked seeing Tilly. Tilly's one of my favorite characters on the on, on the episode on the uh, show rather. And so, seeing an episode where she was kind of Part of the a plot uh and her journey was part of the a plot was 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 cool some some of the stuff on navarre is was was interesting because i always like uh episodes that go to vulcan i mean now navarre uh so that that was cool because the, those are always beautifully shot since the since the enterprise era they they've uh they've rendered navarre in a very very evocative and very um specific way uh, I mean, it was described in in like Spock Spock's era, but they they really try to keep consistent the way that they how they represent it. So, uh, so yeah, I like the episode. I I I'm looking forward to them kind of getting getting further along now that they're they're working with all these threads and kind of going like moving down to like like I said, two plots per episode would be would be my my, my sweet spot. Uh, but yeah, I like the episode. All right. Yeah, def definitely, definitely. Uh, the DMA is part of this episode, but kind of on its periphery. Like it's 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 a uh, similar to last week when the DMA was related to why the Quilat Malat nun was doing what she was doing. It was kind of like 
related to why she was doing it, but not to the same main, the main plot. It was sort it's sort of the same thing here. Like it, it plays a part in in why people are making des decisions that they're making, but it's not the main plot. So yeah, I think the the DMA the DMA is probably going to come up again next week as a as a as a more major thing. Although I think I I did watch the the um the trailer for next week and I think they're actually going to deal a little bit with the Emerald Chain next week as well. So maybe again the Emerald Chain's machinations will have to do with the DMA, but not directly. <laughs> so we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't we haven't we haven't heard about it's like there was a there was a assumption, I think, without it being split, stated explicitly that the Emerald Chain was around the around the table in the second episode when Stamets was explaining everything to Navarre and the other dignitaries that were there. So it looked like someone was there from the Emerald Chain uh, to get that debrief, but there was a, there wasn't an actual call out. But yeah, we get we definitely get a call out in this episode uh, in one of the plot lines, and apparently they're going to show up again in the next episode as well. So, without further ado, let's uh, jump into spoiler talk. I will say uh, to join the conversation, uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, it helps us grow the channel. Uh, and let's move into spoiler talk. So, I actually have some screenshots. Let me jump over to. So the way that we're going to talk about this is actually in the not in chronological order. We're just going to go from the different plots. So like I said, there's a book plot, uh, then there's a plot on Navarre with Burnham and Saru, and then there's the Tilly plot. So I'm going to do the C plot first, and then the B, and then the A uh, as we as we talk through this. So, but before we get into the plots, we actually get something that we don't get a lot in the Discovery era. It's a captain's log, which is just kind of like the the prologue for the entire episode. So I'm gonna go. Actually, I'm gonna actually go through that first. So at the beginning of the the episode, we 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 learn that this is about a week since the Quillot Malot um, episode. That well, I guess episode in their lives, but actually, it's, it's actually an actual week since the, the, the episode. Uh, so they're orbiting Navarre, and Stamets is working with the the uh, the Science Council there to still figure out the DMA. Uh, Book is still dealing with his issues. Uh, we get a shot here at the beginning of Tilly. Uh, she doesn't mention Tilly, but we get this shot of Tilly in her looking at this snow globe, which is going to factor in later on in the episode uh, that she that she owns. Uh, she mentions that Book is is dealing with his 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 issues with uh, with uh, Quajon being destroyed. Uh, he got a, a bit of a reprieve uh, in, from the Tarina, the president of of Navarre. But it's sort of still coming, coming. Uh, it's he's still, of course, understandably dealing with his issues, and Stamets and Stamets is dealing with. Uh, and the reason that they're there is Stamets is working on the the DMA. She, the the other thing that she mentions in this in, in this um, captain's log is that Cap uh, Colbert is like now the full time, the full time. Um, Counselor, Sips Counselor has suggested people get R and R. So we get a lot, a bunch of images of the ship, the people on the ship getting, um, taking time off and trying to, trying to, trying to reset a little bit. So that's that's a prologue for the episode. Um, and then we kind of jump in after she talks about book to the the episode. But since we're not going in chronological order, I just <laughs> I want to point out. So they they changed the uh, the beginning of the. Uh, the, the start the starting uh, uh, credits to, to show like the no, uh, Quajon being destroyed I didn't I don't know if they added that the, added this this week or if it was on I, I didn't get I didn't get a chance to look at last week but you see the the Quajon um, destruction also you see the uh, Sinequa is a producer now in this in the same shot so that that's a that's actually pretty cool but yeah but anyway uh, we jump to C C plot so C plot is basically 
the suggestion from Burnham in the prologue is that she he go and see Dr. Colbert. So Dr. Colbert has um, talks through talks to book throughout this episode, trying to help him work through his grief. So the first scene is him trying to get him to open up, and and he's resistant to therapy, as a lot of people sort of are, especially if there's it's not their idea to go to therapy. Uh, um, so he's resistant and he, uh, first kind of suggests that grudge is the reason why he's, he's not sleeping. Uh, and Dr. Cobra mentions something called a standing funeral. Have you ever heard of anything like that? Uh, it's, uh, Yeah. A common practice is then may not be in favor anymore. So certain I say, because I feel like Culber, uh is always giving people advice uh, or, you know, helping people figure things out and you like, have not heard much about him. So that his little, the story he told uh, was sort of a nice peek into his history. And you sort of see like in his um, conversation with Book that, you know, there is more going on for him as well. And yeah. um, I'm wondering like how he is processing uh, the trauma of the last uh, few years of discovery has, has been through and channeling. Because um, I, I take it that the technique he's showing Book or you know, walking book through is one that he uses himself, or has been using himself, um, to help him heal. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's 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 definitely it seems to be so. Like I, I didn't get a chance to look it up either. It, it seems to be like a um, uh, from from the actor and also the character's heritage. I guess it's it's a, it's a South American thing. Um, but I, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it, he definitely seems to open up a little bit more than you expect um, a therapist to do. But he mentions the reason why, because like like you said, they're ship they're shipmates and they already know a little bit about each other. Um, let me jump back over here. All right, so uh, so his therapy after he tells him this is to have him. Um, basically create a mandala in the sand and the mandala um this is i guess some sand that it's supposed to represent the sand from his world and he gets frustrated because he knows that this, this is not the real sand that that he would use in a healing, healing ritual um it's just programmable matter to, to look like this this uh sand um and he loses loses his temper here um and he acknowledges that he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have, um, he, he, sorry, he can't replace Quajon because Quajon is re irreplaceable, but they're going to mm -hmm. try to do whatever they can to help him work through this. And, and he, and he, he seems like he's on the brink of breaking down here and he just tells him, yeah, you, this is going to take a very long time. So the, the end of the session is him actually working through something uh, sorry, work, working to actually create something, uh, and Culber, sorry, Book asks, what, what should you do now? And he says, basically, you know, after you're done with the mandala, you're supposed to wipe it away. So that's the, that's, that's the entire, uh, C plot of, of the episode with, with Book. And, the, and that's the last time we see Book in this episode. Uh -huh. Go ahead. I was gonna say, like, I, I think, like, that realization, like, where Culver got into wreck, like, verbalizing, like, no, you're never going to be able to. I mean, I think he, I mean, he knows it, right? Mm -hmm. But to, to really 
get it out. Like you're never going to be able to heal the way you used to heal before by going um, to Quajon and um, connecting with your planet the way you did before. Like that is done, you know, and so you have to, and it will take a long time. Like I think acknowledging, you think Colbert says, it's going to take a long ass time. Right? Yes. There's no, yes. <laughs> there's no like set time of when you're going to feel better, when you're going to, to heal um but just know and expect it to 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 take a lot of time and a lot of work and i think book um you know that sort of resonated with him and that like then that's when he sort of got back to it like yeah it's, yeah like, yeah I, I mean i think they're probably gonna so like i've i've seen people complain about the fact that they they're hitting the same note over and over again but it's also realistic people don't get over lost <laughs> lost that quickly um i understand that they also have their people are also watching a television show so they want to be entertained and watching someone go through grief in real time ne isn't necessarily entertaining but I, I, I don't know i think they'll probably find a balance where you're not following his grief on a regular basis um but also not like copping out on this thing like they usually do in television where people's people's uh, problems are solved by the end of the episode or even even um, a couple weeks after the episode it's uh, it's uh it's that's not realistic so so I just, yeah and then I saw in the um oh gosh I guess the writing room where they were talking a little bit about I mean this this was all like written and filmed during the pandemic mm -hmm. right of COVID-19 and obviously they're not gonna write about the pandemic but I think maybe this is a way to sort of you know deal the dma itself is like everybody is is in this you know yeah. struggle together and having to come together and fight it and a lot of people are working through grief a lot of people have been lost a lot yeah. of people and disabled by it and so there there is you know a lot to process from that so that's um, I think they're parallel. That's that's an that's an excellent point, and, and I a point uh, something I hadn't even thought about. The, they the, I, the DMA was always supposed to be kind of a stand-in for an existential threat, which is similar to what we're dealing with now in the pandemic. But you're you're right. There, there are a lot of people who's who this will probably resonate with, like books journey hit itself. Like I, I I have been lucky enough not to lose anyone over the last year, but many many people have, and the reality of it is that they're probably they're definitely still dealing with that that th those issues, right? So, so to see it cheaply dealt with in this show would probably be a disservice to those people, and I and I they probably appreciate even mm -hmm. for they appreciate that they're 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 taking time with a book story. So yeah. Uh, so that was the end of book story for this episode. But as as we said, it's probably going to continue on. Uh, the beginning of this the B plot was. Uh, meeting with Saru and and uh, Burnham in her office. Uh, so Saru tells tells Burnham that they have been summoned to the closing ceremonies of the negotiation between Navarre and the Federation for Navarre to rejoin the Federation, and they've been asked to sit in because Admiral Vance has a twenty four hour bug of some sort. <laughs> um, it, that he has to let chest. That he, that, yeah, he has, <laughs> to let, has to let Jess, Jess stayed in his stomach, which is uh, interesting. Um, so, so they're supposed to just sit and not and not say anything. This is what they're. This is what they're told at the be, the beginning. Um, Bram doesn't want to come, but she was like, it, it, "Suri's like, yeah, it wasn't really a suggestion." <laughs> so this is what I was talking about uh, in the spoiler free part when I said that the. Like Vulcan is all, all always rendered very beautifully. These these shots were very, very awesome. Uh, and then we all at the very beginning of the ceremony we see uh, President Tarina being not so on at all about her favor for for for, for Saru. She she uh, gets him a ver very specific Calpian tea and doesn't offer tea to anyone else. <laughs> right, like nobody nobody even gets one. Yeah, right? yeah. Like there's Saru, you know. Yeah. It's, it's it's cute to like to see that interaction and that that um emotion you know yeah. despite all of the drama going on <laughs> yes 
He's like, hi, friend. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, they, it was obvious they had a connection in the, in the last season as well. Yeah. And, and there were a lot of people who were they kind of saw that as also. So uh, it, it's interesting that they they followed that that uh, that thread. I don't know if they were paying attention to people's people like shipping them last year or that it was always it was always in the cards for them. But uh, um, it's it's cute. It's uh, it's definitely cute. Uh, so, so we'll we'll see. So, they are as as I said at the end of the negotiation here, and they were going to uh, close the negotiations until the president of Navarre mentions that there is another uh, item that they want the uh, un. un, un unconditional addition to the uh to the uh agreement to be able to exit without 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 condition rather uh and the president of the federation says it's unacceptable this will weaken the this will weaken the 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 federation because it'll it'll mean that other people will suggest will request this which is you know understandable and she's and she's right like (laughs) if there's if there's no pain at all for for decoupling from the from the federation it's a very weak organization right um so this is the beginning of you getting like hints of her of the political theater because like (laughs) they're both like making pronouncements and kind of looking back at their people um like 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 and speaking very pointedly yeah yeah carefully yeah yeah. this is the thing that i understand what i'm telling you (laughs) wink wink judge judge exactly it's like this is the thing that uh, that my people want me to say and they're and they're all very pleased that she's saying it yeah she's 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 Mm -hmm. she's stick she's she's she's, uh um um put up Putting the business to the to the federation, it's it's very it's very funny. Like it, in retrospect, watching it back, knowing what's going to happen later later on, watching back these watching back these scenes and in in, in, in uh, their play acting basically to each other. So Burnham st- stands up and she says, "You know, you, why are you guys going to blow this up over like <laughs> one issue?" And they just take they take a recess and she goes to talk to the president. Mm-hmm. Um, and Saru goes to talk to Tarina. Uh, after their conversations, they get the hint that they were meant to try to come up with some sort of solution um, to to intervene in some way. So Tarina goes off to meditate, and the president goes back to her ship. Right. So that's where that's that's where the things are are left uh, for a bit. Um, and then we go to the other timelines, but since we're, we're just keeping on, on with, uh, with C right now. So this is, this is also where, <laughs> this is also where the president is like, listen well, without another solution, <laughs> without another solution, my hands seem to be tied again. Now glancing over to other people, uh, yeah. because you get, they, they, they both can't say things directly in front of the other people because they have power but they also have power insofar as the power that has been given to them by the people that are around them that are in earshot yeah. of them so 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 Tarina mentions in the next scene when when Saru goes back and and talks to her and her quarters um that that part of the coalition part of the the demand is coming from is coming from the the Vulcan pur- purists, which is which is kind of weird that they even have Vulcan purists still, now that Navarre is one world. I would think that. Is it though? I mean, this country has purists, right? Yeah, but <laughs> how how were how, how how were they able to? How were they able to even create Navarre? Let alone like let alone like join the Federation. Like Navarre is. Navarre is a, co- a a combination of Vulcans and, and Romulans. If the I mean the purists had so so much political power, would they wouldn't they have stopped that union f- from happening? It's a it's a it's a tense. Well, I don't know how tense it is, right? But it's a brokered piece. Mm-hmm. I don't assume that everybody. There there probably is some sentiment that, mm-hmm. or still you know, um, that Romulans should not be on Navarre. Uh, right. You know, like, I, I think that's 
sadly is still a very like normal, you know, people still have nativist attitudes. So it's not terribly surprising. And I think that's a part of the struggle is that they and they because of the history they've had with the Federation, mm. there is probably genuine skepticism and people just sort of wanting to see how much power they can exert into you know formulating terms that mm. or, or just making the situation more difficult right there doesn't need to be I don't think there needs to be a necessarily well maybe logical reason on their part mm-hmm. uh, but uh, I think at a time like this it does not make sense to not be part of a body that has more resources although Navarre seems to sort of you know, be almost a rival in terms of resources. Well, I mean, I, I think I think they're they're so to Burnham's point when she when she stood up. There's a difference between enduring. So they endured for a hundred years, but they, they but not necessarily thrive, thrive. thriving, right? So I think they yeah. they'd be fine. Um, yeah, they they're right. They would probably be fine. Uh, but they could do yeah. They, and some people are okay with just doing yeah fine yeah yeah. Um, so yeah, the before she they before he goes to her quarters to talk to her about this, uh, like I said, they they convene and they 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 they, they figure out that that the animal was probably not sick, and they and, and this is poli- yeah. this is political theater, and they were probably brought there for a very specific reason to 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 uh, try to fix this problem or come up with a third a third way, so so he goes to talk to her in her quarters uh, and. She she slips slips the thing about the the uh, the Vulcan purist, um, or is it purist? Um, I forget the, the the term that she used. Um, the but uh, so yeah, I, I I guess they're a very part, strong, hard, large part of her her uh, her coalition. Uh, I I but again, it still doesn't make a hundred percent sense to me that they would be so powerful. Um, in a in a in a world where there are also Romulans, where you expect, I mean, I, I you know, also probably factions of Romulans as well, because you have the Kualat Malat, you also yeah. have the Northern Romulans and the Southern Romulans, so you think you think that those would have strong voices. But now that you say that, I think it's possible that this that could be a point where all of those groups might see the value or have a desire to want to withdraw from the federation no questions asked immediately yeah. right because then it it comes back to now we we can deal with this internally mm-hmm. right we, um so maybe that is like a unifying <laughs> so it's it, it you know there's it appears but maybe everybody's like well yeah if we don't have to deal or if we don't like what the federation is doing we can just peace out and and deal with it amongst ourselves. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. So at the, at the end of their conversation, uh, she actually shows him how to how to uh, meditate uh, because, as he mentions, she has questions of like politics, and he has questions of like place. So he's trying to kind of meditate on those where he should be, uh, and I guess that'll come up again later on in the in the in the season. So then we go. Uh, back to um after this burnham goes to the discovery and then talks to the president about the situation and again she's just trying they're just trying to come to a resolution here where they find a third a third path and what they come up with in the in the next scene and I'm not sure how you feel about what the the, the solution here so the, there's also some gr- gristling about this because Burnham is, is sort of the solution again here because she's a Navari she's a Navari citizen, right? So mm-hmm. I don't have an issue with Burnham being the solution because it makes sense that she's she's a citizen. I mean, it's great that they gave her her citizenship even though like technically she's a she was a Vulcan citizen, but whatever. Uh but she she's also part of Starfleet. But Starfleet is a organization under the Federation. So I'm not sure how separated for star street would be from the federation and i sort of get tarina's point that you know this is a civilian this is a civilian um gathering and you you brought star freak which is sort of a military organization to this 
to the setting. So they 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 are kind. Of, it's kind of weird for them to be here in the first place. But again, the military is under the Federation. So what did you think about this this uh, solution of theirs, where the Federation would kind of sit in as the third, the arbiter or the bridge between the uh, between the the Navarre and and the and the Federation. Yeah, it seemed a little odd because Burnham also presents this as a way for any planet in the Federation to to address their concerns, right? She's like, well, if, you know, like, if Navarre does it. Um, so I'm like, she's a committee of one. No, no, like, no, 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 no. I, I, to, my, to, my, to my, my understanding was that it would be a committee of a bunch of people, but they would be Starfleet officers, and she she would be the representative specifically who could bridge this particular yeah. this particular part like like she she would be on the committee but she she would be the one that would mostly be responsible for bridging Navarre and the Federation so it it would be something that that other worlds might want to enact or or or, mm-hmm. or use i mean hopefully <laughs> i mean the only way that this might work out in other worlds is if they have other starfleet officers who come from from the world that hasn't hasn't joined yeah right it's a very unique yeah. sort of situation yeah. but and um i mean it's it's okay i was just like oh this is perfect right because you're like the one person who <laughs> who yeah it's probably has a foot in both of those it prob- probably probably the one person yeah. in the entire galaxy right because like they 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 broke off from the Federation a hundred years ago, so there's probably no other Vulcans or Romulans in the Federation. So mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> I mean, gotcha. I, I mean that she she would she's she's the one person, but also like Saru is probably the one person as well who's in the Federation who's also part of the the Kelp uh, um, the Kelpian. So I, I think that's probably the case for a lot of people because a lot of people broke off from the Federation. Who, a lot of people who are on that ship, that Discovery ship, if they're, if they're from a planet that's not Earth, um, they're the one, maybe the one person in the whole Federation who's from that planet right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, Saru made a great point, well, the, or yeah. um, Burnham made a great point that all of their, like, the, the cultures represented their uh you know, are, we're sort of born out of two very, well, well, in case of Navarre, not different species, um, but different cultures at least coming together to, you know, form a new thing. And that um, you learn, you or you have to learn to to trust and, and work with with others, right? They've done it before, so they can, they can do it again. Yeah. And... Um, so yeah, yeah. I mean, as you said, he, she makes that point about the Navari people, and I'm not sure if Navari is how you would do, but the Navarre people, uh, because like like as we were, as we were saying, they're Romulans and they're 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 Vulcans there. But she also makes the point because of the the president herself, who who's a, mm-hmm. who's a mixture of of Cardassian, Bajoran, and a uh, human. Uh, as, as she mentions, the Cardassians attack human. Earth and and um and and Bajor, Bajor. They occupied, uh, occupied Bajor for generations and and uh, Saru's point is that you know he, it's still gonna be, it's still because he where, when he left the Ba'ul were subjugators of him mm-hmm. uh, and, and yeah. he kind of kind of he kind of has to put that in the back of his head that that prejudice in the back of his head and he probably and he mentioned he he's very clear about the fact he's he ha- has to struggle with it he's probably going to struggle with it for the rest of his life because. It's, it's difficult to turn that off, right? Uh, um, but he he recognizes intellectually that his planet is better off because they, they put those divisions in the path. They put those p- divisions behind them. So, yeah. Uh, so I, I understand all their points. I'm just not sure the solution is very clear to me or makes like 100% sense to me. So, yeah. There they make they make very good valid points, but the solution, the third way that they came up with, because I, I, before they came up with a solution, I was like, okay, are they going to bring in? Is there some unseen person that's going to come in in the third? At, 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 like, like 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 that like, could be this third way. Like I, I thought it was going to bring some arbiter at some point. It was like, no, yeah. it's just us. We're going to be the, we're going to be the arbiters. It was like, okay, whatever. It, yeah, because that would have made more sense to me to bring in like a completely neutral yeah, or yeah. 
third party to, to bring, or maybe not, well, not unknown to them. But no, no, not, like, it would probably be known to all parties involved, but right. it wouldn't be necessarily, yeah. Like free of influence right. and motivation. Yeah, that's, that's where I thought it was going yeah. as well. But no. Yeah, so it's 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 an okay solution but it's it's sort of also a little a little weird but anyway they they accept it regardless of whether how weird it seems to seems to us uh and they then we have the ceremony of them um uh the ceremony ceremony of them getting the federation flag which i guess i, I guess we'll have one more star um and at the end of this, we have a conversation between, I think, Saru. Well, we have a conversation between Tarina and and the president about um, going forward, and then we have a conversation between Saru and Tarina. And then I think he asks that they go off and have more conversations or something like that. And then you see, and then you see Burnham laughing at, at like laughing to yeah. herself about that. Um, and then she has a short conversation with the president, uh, and, and she's basically like, "I understand she can't be forthright about everything, but I would like more transparency." Um, mm-hmm. And that's and that's the end of that. Uh, that um, well, that's when the press she reveals that her source was Tarina, right? So yeah, she yeah, had yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Um, really discreet. I, I don't imagine in how you handle these things, just you know, on on the off chances. That, a communication gets intercepted or whatever you at least have the ability to say you didn't know or yeah. source was anonymous or whatever yeah i mean yeah. i sort of so, so like from our part our, our perspective we we know burnham and we know that she's trustworthy but from her perspective she doesn't know burnham and, right, she, and, and yeah. she's the president and she has a lot to think about yeah. and a lot and and, and 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 a lot riding on this this thing so she doesn't know how discreet burnham is or how whether or not she's going to blow up things by not being discreet and not 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 uh playing politics because she doesn't seem to in her other pre- in previous interactions with her she seemed to be less than receptive about playing political games like in the, just in the, just in the previous week just in the previous week, and actually, one of the things I, I forgot to mention there is that uh, part of the conversation there was about what was happen- what was going to happen with the Kuala um mm-hmm. person. So she talked to Tarina about her about where, what's happening with her, and apparently, her mother is going to go to uh, a retreat with the person and have her meditate on her her issues. And then, after she goes through that rehabilitation process, she's going to make some sort of bends to the family. So they, they tied up the loose end from last week. But I can understand, given how outraged Burnham was about the what happened last week, how the president would be cautious about playing political games or, or, or letting her in on all the political games that she was playing, all the political theater and stuff like that, because she might, she might, she's like all this stuff, she might be like, all this stuff is ridiculous. Let's just be straightforward. And that would have blown up everything because, because yeah. sometimes you have to play those games. Like, like it, it, if it, it, the Vulcan purists or wouldn't have accepted this deal if they known that Tarina let oh, yeah. yeah yeah the Vulcan yeah. purists wouldn't have accepted this deal if they if they knew that 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 everyone was working together in the in the in the in the background so like yeah and and Pre- president Rillick doesn't mention the coalition on her end but she's always eyeing these people whoever though whoever right. these people are they ha- she has to keep these people happy as well so so yeah, yeah. um and even if they think you're working together they would need to have proof <laughs> that you're, yeah. you know, so there's, if you sort of keep these things, the, the moving parts separate, yeah. right, they would have to speculate yeah. without necessarily having anything concrete. Yeah. And, it, and I think it also forces them into a position where you can continue to, you cannot accept this solution. Yeah, but they, but they, they seem, un- they seem unreasonable and then they have to, yeah. Right. So, yeah, I, so yeah, she, she, it's, it's, I understand Bur- Burnham's position, but we know Burnham and the president yeah. doesn't know her, and she had to be careful. So I, I I understand 
why she she also played it the way that she did. Kind of like, you know, is she going to play the game? Is she going to be helpful here? I don't know. She 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 like on paper is going to be is is a very helpful p- person here because she's a Navari citizen and she knows these people. But like, I don't know. I I, I don't know. Given her temperament, <laughs> my previous interactions with her. So so I can, I can, I can, I can, I get get why she played it the way that she did. Um. So after this week, so so that's that's our that's our B plot, and our A plot is with Tilly. So Tilly is starts the the episode off talking to Colbert about all the things that he suggested about getting kind of novelty, putting novelty in his, into her her life, and he suggests after this conversation, um, and after she she kind of lists all the things that she she uh, is thinking about, including. <laughs> possibly going into medicine um he suggests that uh she uh talk to kovic which is and, and take up a an assignment to help out cadets at, at starfleet academy and he also mm-hmm. asks her to take adira along and then we get a scene with adira and and gray and they are very reluctant to go along on this trip uh, because they believe that they're not a cadet. And even though they didn't go through Star Trek Academy, they got they got they got a field commission to, to ensign. But that's <laughs> which I, I, I obviously is not occurring to them. But whatever. Um, so so it's 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 very inter- this this scene was actually pretty interesting to me and pretty cool to me because you kind of see their different differing personalities even though they both had the the tall symbiote inside of them it doesn't they have all the experiences of the these other lives which is going to change them but also they at the core are completely different people like gray is much more outgoing (laughs) and just 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 at base uh so in last season in the last season, uh, they had the flashback where Gray, where 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 Daryl was saying that Gray is, seems more confident. But I, I think there was probably just, just an underlying confidence that was just amplified by getting by getting the symbiote. Uh, whereas whereas Adira doesn't necessarily have that and has to develop that has to develop that confidence in themselves. So yeah, uh, so. Well, I think their their confidence is compartmentalized because right? they're very they think... confident about their work and like what they can what they know what they can do. Right. And I think it's the social aspect of life yeah. that they're just like they're, they're far, no. They're far, they're, they're, they're yeah, they're different they're, they definitely think that they are very competent about their what they what they know they can do, like you said. But yeah, they don't think that they need or will be very good at connecting with other people playing well with other people uh whereas yeah. gray is like um got new bar got new body got a party <laughs> it's like i'm gonna <laughs> it's, yeah. like, it's yeah. like i'm gonna go into the room and then i'll say hi and then i'll make a new friend <laughs> like, like, exactly. yeah, so, like, exactly. yeah. Yeah. uh so it's it's completely completely different <laughs> completely different yeah, approach I've, I've to been... I've been in your head for a yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So it, that was. Uh, it was sweet to see. I'm, I'm curious to see how their relationship, uh, what happens with their relationship, yeah. as the rest of the yeah. season. Yeah. So at Starfleet Academy, they get they get a bit of a, a debrief here. Uh, Kovic uh, says that uh, they're having a bit of an issue with the cadets. They're having team building issues, very similar to Adira's team building issue. Uh, Adira, so Kovac says you should go over by with the cadets, and this is already the beginning of like Adira was like, "I'm an officer, I'm an officer, but okay, I guess I'll go over there." I was like, uh, and he fills in Tilly on the issue here that they, you know, they come from different worlds. They they kind of uh, are having issues trusting each other which is kind of a core to you know the federation it's a federation of planets they, ca- they kind of have to work well with each other 
Uh, so this is gonna and given the the threat of the DMA, they're gonna need people to work with it, each other even more. So yeah, so they so they go on this. They get in the shuttle to do this survey mission uh, mm -hmm. on one of the moons. It's supposed to be an M, M class moon. And typical Tilly, she's very tries to be very bubbly, um, <laughs> bubbly here. And these these kids are like completely turned off by this. Uh, she tries to get them to introduce themselves. That doesn't really that doesn't really work. She tells them a little bit about herself, about like when she was a cadet and she dropped a tricorder down a, a, a vent or something like that. She tells them about the mission, and then they they're, they're off. And there's a, a lieutenant column who's a uh, flying flying the ship here. So they hit. Yeah. Oh, and this is also where <laughs> Adir is like, uh, "Why are you giving me assignments? I thought I'd be your aide on this." Until this, until he's like, right. "Yeah, for this for this uh, mission, you should probably think of yourself as a good dad because you got a you, you got a lot to learn." Um. So. Yeah, I mean, because Tilly would have gone through, you know, Starfleet Academy, yeah, Academy, she, right? You know, yeah. a very organized and structured, like time tested, yeah, system. And now like, they're trying to put this system back together in a time when they're already under threat, right? They need officers, they need a crew, and you know, everything is just in disarray, and they're trying, they're battling. So the Orion and the Tellarite uh, yeah. are like, you know, you know, at each other's throats. Um, yeah. And then even the human, right? Because Earth is also yeah. connected. For Earth, time, Earth is so. disconnected. Even even the the human that's on this, that's part of these cadets, she's not even from Earth. She's from one of the moons of Titan. Oh, that's right. Titan. She's one of the moons of, the, one of the... Uh, she's from Titan. She's from yeah. Titan. Um, the moon Titan, rather. Um, so the... <laughs> the other thing is, as you said, the uh, I think in the first episode we hear that this is Starfleet, Starfleet Academy opening up after like a hundred years or something like that, or or, or or many many years, right? So like you gotta ima you gotta imagine that everyone in Starfleet has gotten field commissions. Everyone in Starfleet right now, ha even the admirals, they never mm -hmm. really went through. <laughs> They never went through actual academy, right? They 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 kind of learned on the job and got field commissions, similar to Adira, and they didn't get this. They didn't get the structure that that these these cadets are, are are getting. So it's it's a very interesting, it's a very interesting federation that they find themselves in. They definitely have some all, all the ethos, but they don't necessarily have the same structure that yeah. they that they they had back in the. In Picard's day or or Kirk's day, when they had Starfleet, Starfleet Academy, and it, and Kovach kind of hints at this at the end of the episode when he's like, "You guys came here, and it wasn't just that you were nine hundred and thirty years out of place. You also were like anything is possible." Which you know, rubbed us the wrong way because like we were like, J "Just so many things are possible." <laughs> that's right. the, that's the word that we accept. Fun. Yeah, that's the word that we accepted. Just so many things are possible. Uh, we have we, we believe in all these ideals, but just so many things are possible within these ideals. So, yeah. Um, so they hit some disturbance, and they they, they crash they crash on um, their ship yeah. uh, on a the wrong in the in the wrong place. They they crash on a um, one of the moons of this planet, but it's the different it's 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 the wrong moon. The lieutenant the lieutenant is killed. So it's just the cadets, Adira, and Tilly, but uh, are, are left to kind of figure the situation out. Uh, and it appears that they are on the moon Kokaitis, which is not where they were planning to be. They're, they're, this is an L-class L class moon instead of the M-class moon that they were going to go to. So this is breathable, breathable atmosphere, but a uh, hostile, harsh. hostile um, harsh environment and ice and ice ice planet or sorry ice ice moon so the the kids are still kind of at each other's throats here um this this guy is a tellerite this guy's an orion um it's a very new a very new um which we call it designed for the tellerites as well so the tellerites so 
um, Tilly gets in between these these guys and forces them to forces them to tell a little bit about themselves. So this is where we get information about Sasha being from the t- the Titan Moon. This is also where they get information about this Tellarite. Unfortunately, finding himself in Emerald Chain territories uh, when he was when at the at, at the burn. And he says he wasn't treated very well. And we get a little bit more about that later on in the episode. And this guy is like, I'm on Orion and no one trusts me. <laughs> so I, I, I'm the top of my class. So we get a little bit more. So after this, their their ship is attacked by these, these things. I didn't really understand this that well. Uh... Did they say it was a colony? These 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 things are individual, but they're not necessarily individual. Like they're connected with by like a hive mind or something. So they yeah they don't really explain because I think you only ever see a couple of them, right? So I don't know if it was maybe just they couldn't scan them accurately. So or they didn't want to, or, or they didn't want to spend the money on the animation of of like a ho- what, yeah like, right because they think there are hundreds of them amassing right. So maybe it's whatever. Um, energy they produce, but yeah, they didn't really like. You, I, I thought there would have been more of them, but two was more than enough. To... Because they're very, they're very big. So t- I guess two, yeah. two is two is more than enough to be a threat to them. Uh, 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 e- even if there are hundreds of them. So, and I, it was funny that the Orion was like, "Wait, this is a simulation, right? We can just <laughs> end the simulation." I'm like. That's one possibility. But yeah, no, we saw this is, we, this is real. <laughs> yeah, we definitely saw that in a episode. So like, <laughs> that was actually a callback to an episode with Wesley. So like, he, <laughs> uh, and it happened to be in Starfleet Academy, right? So he was taking a test, and someone was was uh, hurt, and he had to make a decision. Um, he had to make a decision, and he thought that someone died. And then at the end of the simulation, the person just walked out and say, "Hi." Huh? <laughs> so like, it's like this is, this is yeah. so. So like the Orion, the Orion, um, what's his Haral? Haral, Haral is like, yeah, this is a simulation, right? She said, "No, this is not a simulation. Unfortunately, this is actually happening." So you know yeah. what else? So the lieutenant who died. So I was watching it, um, and but like slightly distracted by the dogs, and so they crash, and I'm like, this person is the lieutenant is dead and I'm like wait I don't remember seeing him on this ship so actually to to rewind it because you don't really like they say his name or whatever and you just yeah he doesn't say he doesn't say anything he's just right and because my first thought was oh like where did he come from because I feel like that's been done as well right where this character shows up and then you realize everybody's having some sort of grand hallucination right manipulated by you know another alien species but it was it was just like a moment where I'm like Wait, who's who's this person? Who's like barely, barely even there. Yeah, he's a he's a red he's a red shirt, even though he's wearing yellow in this episode. So like he he's 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 made to die so that the kids have to kind of deal with just Tilly and, and each other. Uh, but yeah, he was he was flying the, he was flying the ship. He was Lieutenant Colin and and uh, he has no no lines and he's at the, at the front of the ship. And then you know. Uh, for some reason, they they're very selective about what they can they can uh, solve medically. A thousand years in the future because in Picard's time they could bring people back from like the brink of death or even past death but like certain people for plot reasons die irrevocably um in, the, in this show like like I, I feel like in the second the first episode was it the first episode yeah the first episode with the space station that guy didn't necessarily have to die I feel like they if it, oh, dep- yeah. depending on depending on the plot in in a Picard uh, era or TNG era um, thing that his his wounds wouldn't have been so severe that they couldn't have put him in stasis or something to to, to whatever but maybe, maybe it's just a part of them being a little bit more realistic right I guess I, I guess so but like we're like on the edge of like therapies now where you could where where I mean I mean we can't freeze people and, and bring them back, but they, but you but the people do we can chill we, them, we though, do we definitely. do chill like I said we do chill them to to slow down like so, to slow things down so that we can actually get to them so that's something that we can do now so the a thousand years in the future but whatever anyway they couldn't they couldn't save him for plot reasons basically they wanted the cadets to be alone he died he died um and. 
they're being they're and they're on a hostile planet and also there are things trying to kill them. So, so just wrapping up all the things, all the things, uh. all the things, all, all, and they're and they're sniping at each other. So yeah, and and uh, Tilly suggests you know what we need to do because we're at, we we crash in a valley. What we need to do is get up at the ridge so we can mm-hmm. so we can contact the Armstrong, which is the ship that they came in uh, that, that transported them here. Uh, so. They need to get up at the top of the ridge, which means that they have to uh, cross across, go across this terrain. The Tellarite is kind of having none of it, um, and the Orion is like, "Oh, well, I'll just, I'll, I'll go by myself. I have survival training." And Tilly's like, "No, we're all doing this, all this together. Let's, let's, mm-hmm. let's, let's get, let's get out of here." Um, and they continue, they can continue to kind of snipe each at each other here. Um, Tall, tall is like 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 using their knowledge, and that's starting to annoy the right as well. He's, and, he's, and he's like, you know, you're not any other kind of expert. You don't know. You don't know anything about this moon. I'm just glad you know things about spider a lightning and stuff like that. But don't, don't act like you're you're an expert. So he's 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 sniping at at her too. But you know, I mean, that's kind of kind of what Tellarites do. They 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 have they they have disagreeable personal personality. So I guess that's not. It was kind of annoying, but then I was thinking, you know what? That's just Tellarites. Uh, right. Uh, yeah. But this, I mean, it's also like they can't use their technology because that's what's drawing these creatures. Right. Right? Yeah. And I think, I think that's one of the things I've always enjoyed about um, Star Trek and like seeing Starfleet officers is when they find themselves in situations where they can't, they don't have tech or they can't use it. Mm. They seem to be the type of people who. Um, they just use, use, they can still use their wits. Survive, use their wits right? to, to they use their right. They use their wits like they're just so well rounded. Yeah. It was like um, was it the last episode where um oh the gosh the bridge officer who goes kite surfing um, uh, Bryce 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. like they, I mean they're in this future with all of this technology but they still know how to um think laterally without the technology think yeah, right yeah yeah. 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 Like, oh, yeah. yeah, you know, you, you can't, you can't just beam to ask somebody to beam you out of this situation. Yeah, just yet. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, this is where they blow up again on the ice. So so this they they kind of well actually before is it before this or after this that they that yeah yeah this is this is where they they fight again. So they they mm-hmm. start to start to fight again, and the Tellarite is like you know my my. Um, my his family his family, was family was starving um and he, he had to bury his, his 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 grandmother because his parents were too weak to bury him uh sorry b- bury the grandmother because they were feeding him uh and the other guy was like well my my my, my father was a was an activist so they start to but he he didn't even disclose that right he didn't defend himself it was Adira that stood up yeah yeah it was a deal and, it, that, and I guess Adira had done her homework yeah I, on it. I, I assume every I assume both Tilly and she had, had done their yeah. homework did she they she was trying to so like <laughs> Tilly Tilly wasn't telling them to tell to uh, to to um to, to to uh to introduce themselves for her benefit they she 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 got their 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 uh, their profiles. It was it was to cre- create the team building exercise because they they had been at the academy for months and they just didn't talk to each other. Each other. So yeah, uh, T- Tilly and Adira obviously read their the their um their profiles before the before the trip. So yeah, uh, then Adira gets trapped in the ice. This seems to be like the same ice from the beginning of last season that like like uh um like that we- that ice that co- like traps you in like yeah, a yeah. so i don't know maybe it's 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 something it's that a common, thing. common a, a common, common thing phenomenon. <laughs> common phenomenon in the, yeah uh so they they work together to pull tilly out of the pull tilly out of the ice using the med kit and no pull a deer out sorry don't yeah. tilly so uh, pull a deer out of of the ice uh and then after this i think after this i think they get up to the ridge but they also have to get the the um 
get the I forget the name of the the the, the alien species. They have to draw it. Draw. I don't even think they really have a name because they just they call them diff, like the blob or whatever. Well, like, well, they well they're, they're they're using the 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 term the blob like colloquially but they do so like the the moon that they had they were going to do do the survey on hadn't been surveyed but this moon specifically had been surveyed so so when they were in the ship adira brought up the tricorder and she's and 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 they said that it was um they they actually identified the 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 animal and also the fact that it was a a colony uh but yeah, but I don't remember the name of it. I had to look it up in my notes. Uh, so yeah, I I think this is yeah. So she has to draw away. Tilly Tilly has to draw away the uh, the the animal. So she runs she runs she runs a, runs away and starts to shoot at it uh, while they contact the Armstrong and they all try to draw the animal away from her because she doesn't look like she's going to, going to survive. She's, she's going to survive. Uh, so, uh, but I think that was also like an important moment for Tilly, right? Because they, there's like a little discussion, like they realize they need to distract the creatures. Right. And there is Adira puts themselves forward and it's like, I'll, I'll do it. You know, you guys just rescued me. It's my, it's my turn until he, it's like no, I'm I'm in charge. It needs to be, you guys. I guess have your whole future ahead of you because they they are so young, right? They are so yeah. And we talked a little bit about this last night. Like they and they've experienced. They they're so accomplished at this young age. Yeah. Um, but um, but I think that moment for Tilly where she sort of is willing to sacrifice herself, knowing that you know there's a possibility that. She can't. I mean, but she she definitely can't outrun. It's just a matter of when, right? Yeah. And not if. Yeah, yeah. Um, she definitely can't outrun it. But she, her, I, I think that yeah. if Adira was doing it, or if she's doing it, the 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 suggestion here is that we're gonna she she's gonna run as long as she can and hopefully get <laughs> um, mm-hmm. um transported away once they get get the uh, the Armstrong hailed. So yeah, uh, so she's running and they they get transported away. Another one starts to shoot, kind of shoot at them. Sorry, kind of go towards them when they get transported away, and then Tilly gets transported away. So that's that's sort of the end of all the drama. But back at Starfleet Academy, Kovach uh, uh, offers her a teaching position, and then we get. I guess this is obvious at this point that Tilly is going to leave, and she's going to take and she's going to take this this position. Uh, so it's just after this, it's just a, a couple more scenes back at Starfleet Academy, back at back on the Discovery, and also there's this little bit of little bit of exchange here where Tilly tells Adira, you know, you can do anything, uh, you uh, and and kind of tries to give them the confidence that they are lacking in mm-hmm. not necessarily their personal ability because they throughout this episode were were willing to put themselves forward to do things by themselves mm-hmm. <laughs> like I, yeah. I i i will go up the ridge you guys can stay here i will i, I will run after the uh <laughs> i will run 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 after the the uh the uh thing um you guys can stay here but like give her the comp give 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 so Tilly was trying to give them the confidence that they can do anything within a team setting like they could do more if they if they if they yeah. if they put themselves forward to to do to if they actually believe in themse- themselves mm-hmm. so and believe in other and people because right? yeah. i think yeah. that they like um trusting um well one a recognition that you can't do it mm-hmm. all by yourself most yeah. times and that you need to rely on other people to get things done and you know maybe get it done faster and better but you need to you need to rely on your team yeah. Tuscadian pirate zone was the was the species it's a colony species okay that's why yeah yeah I, so. I know I had it in the notes but no, it had the like um, uh, scroll down toward yes but that there was a colony species which again 
didn't make a lot of sense to me, but whatever. <laughs> uh, but think of it like a large, a large bacterial colony on a on a plate, right? Ah, <laughs> uh, um, I see, yeah. I see. So yeah. okay, interesting. Lots of individual, um, but they organ making up. But of, Tilly, yeah. as Tilly explained it, they communicate uh, with we, with each other. Is that how? I mean, you're you're the bi biologist. Is that how actual colonies? work do they do they communicate yeah yeah there's, mm -hmm, yeah um, microorganisms communicate with each other mm -hmm. in lots of ways um so that's not um unusual they have, well, use a lot of chemicals um you know to to sense things mm -hmm. will sometimes send out special projections depending on the type of organism okay uh so they're they are very large ones. Yeah, this so would be this is definitely this, <laughs> these, these are macro organisms right. as opposed to micro right. organisms. But yeah, yeah. Uh, so okay, so they weren't they weren't. Uh, uh, I mean, they they often make stuff up, but they're they're kind of on the yeah. edge of science. So okay, so this is something that actually has uh, a a parallel in re in real science. They're just macro size, just like just like the uh, the tardigrade in the in the first the first season. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we talked about that a little bit. Like it was it was funny and cool at the same time but it's like if if any organism from earth is going to survive in space it would probably be a target yeah. grade, so cool all right so then we have a kind of a heartfelt uh ending here with uh tilly and burnham and tilly tells burnham that she wants to move on and tilly also says that when she got promoted to lieutenant it was one of the worst days of her life because she realized that it's not what she really wanted she just wanted to be mm -hmm. seen by her mother, who we find out in this scene was a diplomat, uh, yeah. uh, which I don't think we got that information in the past. And she, she, the only reason she went into Starfleet was to do something different than what her mother um, wanted her to do. And I, I think apparently she had been all, always working to show her mother that she could be successful outside of what she wanted her to do. And at this point, mm -hmm. her mother's 900 years in the past. Like, yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. Now, now, now she kind of has to live for herself, and in, in a, 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 which is I, I think was sweet that she was like you know, and, and also probably resonated with a lot of people. Definitely re resonated mm -hmm. with Will Wheaton if you watch the uh, the Ready Room thing, because because yeah. he because he cried over it. Uh, but I, I can understand it actually resonating for a lot of people for for some of the same reasons, kind of living up to people's not people's their parents' expectations rather, um, mm -hmm. and trying to be seen by their parents. Mm -hmm. And and have them appreciate it and eval and validate it right? right without without any conditions. So that was you know as, as sad I think as it is to see to know that we'll we'll see less of Tilly. Um, that realization that yeah she she's found something that she truly enjoys, mm -hmm. and I think would be good at. Um, yeah, I definitely think she would be good at it. Yeah, yeah. I think she would definitely be a good a, a good Starfleet Academy um, instructor. Yeah, and and somebody who because because she when she um, was like first talking to the cadets and she or um, to Kovic and was like she was that student who had to be told to shut up, right? Yeah. Like I I think Tilly maybe more than most embodies what Starfleet uh, is all about and can transmit that. Like this is. You know, we're all about, you know, saving the world, saving species, learning, learning all this stuff. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Like, it's, yeah, you know, she's she was all she was all she was all bubbly and, and about. Oh, it's it's so cool. We're gonna get to learn new, about, <laughs> see new species, gonna it. survey a planet. It's cool to me, anyway. So, yeah, so she's definitely like, yeah, she's enthusiastic about the Starfleet stuff and, and, the, and yeah. the exploration stuff and all the science stuff and all the things that you associate. You know, if you if you're paying attention to, to Star Trek. If, but uh, what you associate? But that's with been it. missing, right? In this post-burn world, where yeah. Starfleet has been decimated, yeah. and it's it's trying to survive and not thrive. So there's not they're not exploring. Yeah, exactly. They're definitely not explorers right. anymore. They're they're kind of like yeah. the the peacekeeping armada for the Federation. They're not necessarily they're not necessarily explorers. So yeah, they can get back to the exploration mission, which mm -hmm. is supposed to be at the core of of Starfleet. And I think. She is a good representative of, of of that core. She and also Saru, and we were talking about this a little bit 
before we started recording last night, uh, or we tried to record last night, about them possibly being a spinoff. We talked about this uh, in the second episode as well. Like, I think there's definitely they're 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 kind of making it seem they're putting pe- people in places where it seems to be there's going to be a spinoff. I don't, I don't know if it's going to be a Starfleet Academy spinoff because it looks like it seems to me that Prodigy ended up being kind of like the Starfleet Academy spinoff because they've been talking for years, even before Discovery came out about a Starfleet Academy thing, um, like show that they wanted to do. Uh, and I, I can, I can see Sheru and her being at Starfleet Academy being part of, part of, uh, a Starfleet Academy show. Uh, we talked about him getting his own ship and that being a spinoff, but I could see, I think this is a more viable, a more likely uh, uh, thing that they get a spinoff and they're just people at Starfleet Academy. Um, I don't know. What do you think? I mean, that would be, I would watch it. Yeah. Right? Like, because you, you always, you just see sort of snippets or hear snippets about people's experiences at, at Starfleet Academy mm-hmm. um, and never really get to see what that must be like. Yeah. Um, but it must be, must be interesting. Like just imagining all of those, species coming together like you know learning how to work together but also like just learn just all of the technology that they you know have to train people on yeah. i think that would be pretty fascinating like a a space um the grassy high <laughs> space the grassy high maybe <laughs> yeah i don't know they, they, they're making all the star trek now nowadays there's like yeah. five shows right now uh yeah one two right. three four yeah there's five shows strange new worlds Picard, Discovery, Prodigy, and Lower Decks. So um, I guess they could add another one. I mean, they're already doing five. They're, they already have five in production. And so it was, so it was just like the dean of Star Trek Academy. Yeah, Starfleet yeah, Academy. yeah, yeah. I could buy yeah. that. <laughs> we, sh- we shall see. But uh, yeah, so Tilly leaves the, leaves the ship in. She leaves uh, the snow globe that we saw at the beginning of the episode with Adira, and that snow globe actually has a model of the NXO, NXO one, which was Archer's ship from the show Enterprise inside mm-hmm. of it, and we get the title of the episode on the front of the snow globe, which is uh, all is possible, uh, and you know we get the hugs of everyone goodbye, um, and then and then that's and that's the end of Tilly. Uh, on t- on end of end of Tilly for right now anyway, we shall we shall see. Uh, Mary Wiseman in the in the ready room episode that they dropped yesterday said that Tilly would definitely be back. So we will see mm-hmm. in what capacity she will be back. But yeah, yeah. So yeah. Any other last thoughts about the episode? No, no just you know um, I enjoyed it. You know it. it um, tied up some loose ends. We see some new beginnings. Uh, so I, I think Tilly is probably one of my favorite characters. So I'm curious, and she, I think, has been uh, the comic relief for the show. Yeah, there's the, yeah. Adira is definitely the wide-eyed ensign now, but Adira yeah. isn't as funny as Tilly. Naturally funny. Like Adira mm-hmm. is funny in in a sort of kind of awkward way, but not but mm-hmm. but Adira isn't as talkative or or sociable as as, as Tilly is. So the the comedy and knowing when yeah to diffuse a situation right 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 uh, I think Adira will ramp up yeah and whereas Tilly cool things down. right 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 so we'll, we'll see. So like if, this show can be very heavy, and Tilly was definitely a really awesome like comic relief and it, for the most part when they wrote her to be funny it wasn't inappropriate sometimes when they wrote her to be funny it was in an appropriate inappropriate time uh, but most for the most time for the most part it was it was it was uh int- it was good to see, get her levity in the middle of like some disaster or some very heavy um scene so i i, I don't know they definitely need that element in this show and i'm not sure how they're going to get it without that character unless you unless you start to uh flesh out more of the bridge crew i don't know mm-hmm. so yeah. 
I also wonder how they will deal or like how they plan because they do seem to take the time to deal with how the crew is struggling, right? And so how maybe how Burnham deals with not having Tilly there because they were close. The same with Saru. And then even Adira because I feel like Tilly was more of a mentor to them or they certainly looked up to Tilly, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, in terms of being themselves and, and that sort of tra- trajectory. I, I think Adira will probably uh-huh. lean more on Stamets because there's definitely a mentor situation there as mm. well. Uh, but yeah, but I feel like Stamets is kind of like dad and where whereas, t- whereas yeah. Tilly was kind of more of a near peer. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I'm curious to see how those relationships uh, change or grow or just or just what that means to lose such an important uh, crew member. I mean, and not lose in a bad way, right? Yeah, like, but the, 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 the... She's around, she's just not Yeah, but, but yeah, it was, to... it's an essential, like, chemistry dynamic that's going to be, that's, that's yeah. being pulled away from the chemistry yeah. mix that makes the show work. And I'm sure, I want to see how they're going to make that work. So, like, in one sense, like, and once it she's a more important element of the chemistry than even Saru. Like I like Saru, but the fact if he were to actually go away and like captain his own ship, I don't think it would change the dynamic that much, except for the fact that he does have very wise things to say, very because he's very he's a very stable presence. Uh, but like she's a more constant, bubbly presence in the background that adds to the levity of the show. Whereas, uh, like I said, if you remove her, it's it, I think you'll feel it more than if Saru were to go away and, and captain his own ship. So I don't know. We'll see how it, how how it goes. Yeah. All right. So that's what we think about the episode. But we're interested to hear what you guys think. So please comment to join the conversation. Uh, like and subscribe. And we will see you next time. All right. Bye, guys. Thanks.